Hey, what's up YouTube, Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm gonna show you how to change your front brake pads and your front brake rotor on a 2011 Honda Pilot. Now, the first thing I like to do is pry the caliper pistons back in, but before we push that back in, it's a good idea to pop the hood and take a look at the level of fluid in your master cylinder to make sure you're not gonna overflow that brake fluid as you're, you will be pushing it backwards through this line up into the master cylinder. If the brake fluid has been topped off along the way as the brakes have been wearing down, you'll have to either remove some or another method is you can open this cap right here and open this bleeder screw and let the old fluid come out that way as you push it back in that's a good way to cycle through your fluid as well all right so here's our brake master cylinder right here now the fluid level here is about halfway down and so we've got enough room to push the fluid backwards without uh, overflowing that a lot of people ask me if you need to remove this cap when you push the caliper piston back in and you really don't it's not going to make really much of a difference in the resistance of pushing that uh, caliper piston back in whether this is on or off brake fluid absorbs moisture which causes it to degrade so the less you can expose that the better so I use Usually leave the cap on but let's uh, let's go push the caliper piston back in now I usually just use the screwdriver method of just prying these in but you can take the caliper off and just uh, use a C clamp or a caliper compression tool sometimes I'll do a combination depending on how well I'm able to push these in but just some slow steady pressure here sometimes you can shift this around and if you look in the end it's kind of hard to show on camera but if you look here in the end you'll see where that your screwdriver is in relation to the rotor See, there we go we can actually go this way i can feel the pad going back in all right now our steering's locked but i've got this turned a little bit to the right so that's a little bit easier to work on all right and so there you go you can see that our caliper pistons are pushed all the way back in we've got a lot more room in there now for the new pad material let's go ahead and take the caliper off next and that's these two caliper slide pin bolts here those are 17 millimeter now you can use a breaker bar or a wrench or whatever you've got i'm just going to use this impact with a universal works pretty well And hang on to those. Now I used to use this little thing I made out of a bungee cord with some rope. I finally upgraded to these little caliper hanger hooks, which are really handy. So you don't want to let this hang or drop or dangle from the brake line. So what I do is just kind of put it inside this little hole here and we'll hang this up over here out of the way. There we go. And our brake pads are just falling out. So these little springs right here that push the pads outward, you can see they go right here into this little hole at the end of each pad. That's what uh, prevents them from dragging. They're pretty worn down. This one's got some sort of a weird thing going on here. Looks like something inside the pad, kind of metallic. Maybe it was making some contact with this rotor. These rotors are really glazed and a little warped, so we could probably get these machined or turned, but the owner just decided to go with new ones, so that's what we picked up. And same with this one here. You can see a little bit of like some sort of a piece of metal in the pad itself. Also, you can see that the, the little noise maker, the squealer, this was scratching on the rotor, and that was definitely uh, making some noise and let the owner know that it was time to get these done. Now, if we were just changing the pads, you don't necessarily have to take off this bracket here, but it is easier to get to this hardware and clean this up if you do. Either way, um, if you are just changing the pads, you know, always remember to change this hardware. Most brake kits come with hardware. If it doesn't come with it, you can try to clean that up, but they do recommend changing this, these little abutment clips or retainer springs. Also, we want to make sure that we take out our slide pins and clean those. But I'm going to go ahead and take off this bracket since we are taking off the rotor too. Now this bracket is held on by two 19 millimeter bolts. And they're on there pretty good. So you'll need a, a pretty strong breaker bar or like I'm using here, an impact wrench. I just like to hold one hand on this so it doesn't fall or hit the ground when you take this off. Honda rotors are notorious for getting stuck or being difficult to remove these screws. There is a tool that will make your life a lot easier if you uh, pick this up before doing this job, and that's this right here. This impact screwdriver, it's by Vessel. It's a Vessel Impacta non-slip. I think it's made in Japan. I'll just put a link in the description if you'd like to pick this up. But what this does is you hit the end of it and this actually will spin counterclockwise. It has like a little rotating mechanism in there where you, you just hit the end with a sledgehammer or whatever kind of hammer you've got and it will actually spin this. So as you're hitting it in, it's actually torquing it a little bit to the left or loosening it. Let me show you how it works here. So you just Get that lined up in there. Hold the shaft of the screwdriver, not the end here, because that's gonna be bouncing and moving. So just hold the shaft and make sure it's on there good. And then just give it a couple whacks. 
and that should break it free. Yep, just like that. And you can even reuse these. But if you screw these up or if they get stripped, I'll put a link in the description to some of these replacements as well. Company Mission makes them. Same company that makes the caliper hanger. By the way, these are not Phillips. You know, I've, I used to use a number three Phillips on this and just, you know, hammer it in there and try to turn it with a hex shaft screwdriver. And they break free sometimes, but this is a, I think it's called JIS-3, a Japanese industry standard, as I believe what that stands for, but it, uh, it definitely sits in there better and just hit this a few times and it seems to break it loose. There it goes. And you can see we got lucky here. Our rotor basically just wants to fall off, uh, which is great. So we'll just take that off. If this does get stuck on, these two little threaded holes right here can be used almost as like a press. You just put a bolt in there and that will push against the hub and push the rotor off. Or the Tanya Harding method, just hit it with a hammer till it comes off, that works too. Now a couple things, before we put the new rotor on, of course we need to clean it, wipe down all the uh, packing oil with some brake cleaner. But also I'm gonna, you see this hub has got a lot of rust on here. I'm gonna try to brush that off with a wire wheel. I'll probably put a little bit of anti-seize on this as well. Just make sure you wear some eye protection if you are gonna do this. And then this is just some of this anti-seize just to prevent that from sticking. A little goes a long way with this stuff, so don't don't get too carried away. Mostly just trying to hit this center of this hub. That seems to be where they always stick. Here you do need to make sure that you line up these little tapered holes with the holes where those little machine screws go. Just get some brake cleaner. Wipe that down really well. I already did the other side. And the nice thing about this impact screwdriver, you can still use it as a regular screwdriver as well to get these screws put back in. I'm not gonna use a torque wrench on them, but just kinda gonna make them pretty snug here with this guy. The intent here is just to make sure that this is fully flush up against the hub. Of course, when we put the lugs on, that's gonna seat it too. That'll work. All right, so with our caliper bracket off, we need to get this prepared or cleaned up and ready to go back on. So the, the hardware here just pops off pretty easy. Now we wanna clean this up with a wire brush just to get all that gunk off there because those new clips need to sit fully flush in there. You need to make sure that they're seated completely flush. Okay, now we can pull out and clean and re-grease our slide pins. So we can just wipe this off. You do, you do want to inspect these slide pins because when if they get really hot or pitted, they'll start to stick. Sometimes I'll put them back in once or twice to try to get out any more of that old grease. I'm sure there's a tool for cleaning these, probably a brush or something for cleaning those little, the orifices there for that bracket, but this seems to get at least most of it out. And I think we're okay. And then this is the new grease I'm going to use. This is uh, synthetic brake grease, caliper grease, made by Versacam. Just picked this up at O'Reilly. Kind of a cool shade of blue. Just uh, get that all over this caliper slide pin here. Now you don't want to go too crazy with too much grease because it's not compressible and then that will uh, you know that this will push out and that'll get stuck but let's just see how that feels push that in and kind of twist it and then the little rubber boot will just usually just pop right back onto that pin maybe we'll help it up a little bit there, there we go kind of just have to pull that boot up to get onto the shoulder of that pin as long as it's moving and spinning freely, you should be good. And if there's excess air in there, just pull it back and squeeze it and that'll burp out the air. Now let's pull out this other one. You can see this one's different. This has got a little rubber sleeve on the end. Sometimes this rubber will swell and it'll cause it so that these will not move. And you have to either replace it or, you know, if you get in a bind, you can actually see how it has these little slits or these little channels in the rubber. I've actually cut those a little deeper with a razor blade without cutting the boot off. And that worked. I'll just layer this one up with some grease here too. Put it right back in. See, we've got quite a bit of trapped air and it wants to push back out. You can't have that happen. You gotta pull that back, let it get the air out and that feels good. So you don't want so much grease that it's pushing it out. It's just gotta be able to kind of sit there, move freely and spin freely and that that looks good 
again just always make sure you get all that air out that looks good all right now we have our new hardware and before i put this on you know i've noticed in some areas where they have a lot of rust or a lot of corrosion people are putting grease on this little uh, caliper bracket underneath it's where it's not necessarily lubricating and allowing movement but it's more of a protectant so that's what we're doing now all of the instructions on these brake hardware kits and grease and even a grease manufacturer they say you want to lubricate the contact points or the the movement points that are metal on metal on all the brakes and, and including your slide pins which would be in these channels the back of the pad but by putting some grease underneath there it seems to protect that prevents rust jacking or rust from building that up and causing that to bind so that's why we're putting it on there uh, i think it's a great great idea been doing it lately didn't used to do that at all but it seems to really help protect those uh, caliper brackets especially if you live in a very rusty area also I'm just gonna hit this before I put it on the vehicle sometimes I forget and I try to do this and a lot of times I'll accidentally hit the rotor with this grease and then I got to clean it up but just don't want to put any of this grease on any of the friction surfaces meaning the pad face or the rotor but there you go that's uh that's all cleaned up and this is ready to put back on now another quick note on these caliper support brackets the big ones a lot of manufacturers put loctite on these i don't see any uh, evidence of any loctite or thread locker on these bolts but i am going to put just a little bit that's actually too much perfect so i'm going to uh, just kind of transfer that from one bolt to the next just a really small amount of this thread locker is all i really need and that just kind of gives me a little bit more insurance to know that those are going to stay on these are torqued to 101 so it's it's unlikely that they'll come loose but i can see why most manufacturers do have some thread locker there uh, here we go let's just get these started gonna zip these on with this real quick this is my new 3 8 drive high speed ratchet which I like the Milwaukee the m12 fuel but it's the high speed version it has a smaller head now too but I do really like that and then we're gonna get these torqued this is the gear wrench 85062 torque wrench that I've been using it goes from 10 to 100 pounds and it's a 3 8 drive now my torque wrench really only goes to 100 but you can actually turn it a click past so I just went ahead and set it to 101 and let's get these snugged down all right now we can put our brake pads in now on the brake pads just take note the one with the little squealer or the noise maker goes on the inside now I'm going to take some of that same caliper grease or brake grease and put a little bit on the back of the pad here just really where it makes contact with the parts of the caliper that squeeze on this seems to cut down on some of the, the squealing or vibration that does cause noise so these are kind of just easy to put in if you just line them up at a little bit of an angle and then press them up against the rotor same thing with the inside pad just a little bit of brake grease on either end here too and just get that lined up just make sure again that you don't get grease on the pad surface that looks good now this next part's a little tricky we need to put these springs on here they just go into these little holes in the end of the pad once you put them on there it's going to want to push the pads out and they're just going to want to fall down just like when we took the caliper off they were just falling down just be patient you do just kind of need to hold your hands on it while you put the caliper on so sorry if i block some of this block the camera but let's uh, we're going to take the caliper off first and make sure that that's all clean and ready to go you know i'm also going to just knock some of this dust out of here this will really dirty Just if you're doing that just be careful or mindful of the boots and it's a good idea to inspect the boots and make sure that there's nothing torn or nothing leaking here and you know a lot of times if i have a little bit of this extra grease on my glove i'll usually just smear a little bit on these contact surfaces just on the the parts that touch the pad let me just see if i can peter that here just for a second right there like i said this is the hard part so here we go spring goes in keep your hand on the pads and don't let them push out now let's do the the top one here same thing uh, it's really wanting to push out that's good it's doing its job 
and then we just need to bring the caliper down without knocking anything out and just fit it right over there we go we did it and you can see that slide pin just kind of needs to be turned a little bit to where that flat face lines up with the caliper just like that I don't usually put Loctite or thread lock on these bolts. All right, and then just make sure that those slide pins are lined up and then we'll just zip these back on. And then I did just double check the torque spec on these is 53 foot pounds. And you're done. Now before you head out, just remember to step on the brake pedal several times. Now when you do that, don't press the pedal all the way to the floor. That can damage the seals in your master cylinder. Just press it about halfway several times, which will push these caliper pistons back out until it feels firm. And then remember to double check the fluid level in your master cylinder. Make sure that that's at the appropriate level as well. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description to some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck. Thank you.